Good afternoon and welcome to the Union Cemetery in Whitby, Ontario, Canada. And we begin here with Mr. Robert McLaughlin, who was born in Durham County, Ontario on November 17, 1836. And he passed away in Oshawa, Ontario on November 23, 1921. For more information on Mr. McLaughlin, who was in the automobile industry. Be sure to have a look at him online. There's so much information and we do have some information below this video with information. When you're walking through this graveyard you'll find many many tombstones that just say father, mother, son, daughter, but the tombstones are so old that the weather has removed dates. All you can hear are the birds. So you do see some interesting things when visiting a cemetery. But a discarded can of beer is usually not one anyone likes to see. Here's the resting place of Elizabeth Bryant, the wife of William Ross. She passed away September 27, 1927. It says at Brampton, I will assume she was brought up in the area of Whitby. And also in front, it says in memory of Jane, the wife of Ebenezer W. Bryant, who departed this life February 27th, 1870, at 60 years old. Here lies Lorena Major, the wife of William W. Caldwell of the town of Whitby, who died July 24th, 1858. I will have some information on the founding of Whitby below the video in the information area, so be sure to have a look there. I have never seen this in a cemetery, which is interesting. This is the resting place of Jane W. Mallory, who passed away on March 15th, 1875, at 16 years old, six months and 15 days, it says. Somebody has been here, and there is a Bible that was left here and has been weathered. Some of these tombstones are so old that the earth shifts, and the tombstones fall over and break, and then they are repaired. This is the front of that tombstone, and I cannot make out one letter or date, although at the bottom there is a small tombstone. It appears to be for a child from February to July of 1889. So I'm going to assume that the tombstone that was repaired is much older than that. I always try to make it a point to film some tombstones that are just long ago forgotten, but remember that 
there was a person to this tombstone. Here's another tombstone that's been broken twice and repaired. Two areas, I should say. It's in memory of Eliza, the beloved wife of... Last name, Benjamin Greatrix, who died on June 24th, 1876. And it appears they had a little baby who lived two months. So sad. Matilda Salter passed away on April 30th. 1862 at 37 years old. The others I can't really make out, although I do see the names on the top of the tombstone. I can't make out the second one at the top, but the third and fourth do say father and mother. And I believe I see the word last name Mitchell. Here lies the Hancock family. William Hancock passed away in 1881. His wife, Catherine Curry, who passed away in 1910. And their children, William, who passed away in 1908. Albert, 1935. And Kate, passed away in 1939. Once again, I wanted to include these two people, Agnes and George. No other information, but don't want these two to be ever forgotten. The last name on this headstone is Hester, H-E-S-T-E-R. The person here passed away in February of 1882 at three years old. We will assume that she loved dogs. Underneath the shade of this tree lays the Cochrane family, Samuel Cochrane, who passed away on May 28, 1905. His wife, Anne Jane Finney, who passed away January 12, 1923. And John J. Cochrane, who passed away on August 6th, 1909, I will assume that was their son. So this is the sign for the Union Cemetery, which was established in 1837, and states, remembering the past and honoring the future. And the hours here are Monday to Friday, 8 to 4, at the church, the small church here, just at the entrance here. And this is Kingston Road, Highway 2, people call it, in Whitby, Ontario, Canada.